This week, I'm trading in my skull cap for a tin foil hat because it's time to do some tech busting. We're gonna start by knocking out one of the most ridiculous myths that absolutely will not die. And that's that HDMI has lag. HDMI does have lag. This mini was unplayable for me. And then I hooked it up with a component cable to my old TV and it's so much better now. Quiet you. Anyway, if you've never heard of Brandolini's Law, AKA the bullshit asymmetry principle, it basically states that the amount of energy required to refute bullshit is an order of magnitude greater than to produce it, AKA the difficulty of debunking bullshit. And today we're not just gonna debunk it, we're gonna skin it, roast it, flay it, and drop it like an acid trip. Now, who am I and why am I qualified? Gaming is my hobby. These videos are what I do for fun, but advanced video systems, AKA movie time, is what I do for business. TLDR version. We build crazy theaters and massive video systems, like this 40 foot wide video wall. So I do know a thing or two about video. So let's get down to brass tacks. Here's my handy dandy Leo Bodner. It's not a time sleuth, which I have on the way, but it'll do. I have the tester plugged directly into the display, and as you can see, measuring the top left corner, we're at about 10 and a half milliseconds of delay. For those that like to measure the middle point, you'll see that it's closer to about 14 milliseconds, which isn't a completely accurate way of measuring, by the way, but that's a topic for a different video. Now we're going to add a couple links to the chain. I've got the same tester now plugged into my Crestron 8x8 matrix switch using the same cable and then a 25 foot cable that runs from the switch up to the television itself. And if you take a look at the test measurements, you will see that we're getting the same 10, 10 and a half milliseconds in the top left and around the same 14 in the middle. No difference whatsoever, which is what I would expect. Now, let's take this to a whole nother level and put this puppy to bed. What if I took this 100 foot HDMI copper cable, then run this cable all the way into another room where I have yet another 8x8 matrix switch. The tester plugs into this 100 foot cable and into the switch. The new switch is now connected to my first original switch in my game room over a shielded Cat5 cable, running 50 feet backwards. We then come out of the second switch in my room back into the display. So now we have two HDMI matrix switches linked together by a Cat5 cable over HD base T, a 100 foot HDMI cable, and another 25 foot cable running from the final switch into my display. Are you ready, kids? To absolutely nobody's surprise, well, maybe some people's surprise, <gasps> the numbers are exactly the same. No difference whatsoever. Which is what you would expect. So do HDMI cables introduce any kind of lag whatsoever? In fact, do HDMI switches, even complex matrix switches like I'm using here, introduce lag? Stepping even further, do HD base T long distance transmission over Cat5, like I just used in the chain here, introduce any kind of lag whatsoever? And the answer, as you just saw, is absolutely not. You just saw it for yourself. So send your friends with the tinfoil hats to this video here, because this myth is busted. Oh, oh, wait up, don't go anywhere just yet because I can already hear the hackles. All right, fine, but you didn't prove anything. Maybe HDMI cables aren't slow, but HDMI still is. Whenever I play retro games on my new 4K TV, it's unplayable. Is that so? Well, let's take a short quiz together and see if you feel that way afterwards. Oh, I will. Here, take this. Is that HDMI cable analog or digital? It's digital, duh. It says so right on the cable. Here, look. And what about this cable? Is it analog or digital? Those are analog, duh, anybody can see that. They're RCA cables for analog video and audio. What about this RCA cable? That's different. It's for digital audio. The cable and the bag says so. And what does that mean? Is it sending a bunch of ones and zeros to the TV? Um, yeah, I think so. What's your point? but they're both RCA cables. Why is this one digital? Okay, this is a trick question, isn't it? So if you're ready to listen now, the short answer is that all cables are analog. 
All signal transmission over a copper conductor, like the HDMI cable, is via voltage of varying amplitude and frequency. There's no such thing as ones and zeros magically running around inside the cable, nor across circuit boards. Digital is a mathematical construct that only exists inside the software of a microprocessor. And these processors are blindingly fast. Converting a digital HDMI signal to analog component video happens in the time frame of microseconds. That's thousandths of a millisecond. It's exactly what something like an OSSC does, taking analog video component SCART or VGA and converting it to an HDMI output with near zero lag. It's also what something like an analog DAC does, only in reverse, taking an HDMI input and converting it to analog RGB in the span of microseconds. But then why does my game feel so slow on my new TV? It's definitely slower than my old CRT. Now you're asking the good questions, and the answer is it has nothing to do with HDMI. Unlike a CRT, which does not have a fixed resolution, a modern TV is a fixed pixel display, which means it can only display its native resolution, whether it's 4K, 1080p, etc. So it has to take every input resolution you send it and process the signal, called scaling, to convert it into its native resolution. Ha! I knew it! Scaling the signal makes it slower. Nope. Not quite. Take these HD Fury products as an example. They can scale to just about any resolution from any other and add processing with near zero lag. Most modern TVs can also scale to their native resolutions with microseconds, immeasurable amounts of delay. But don't just take my word for it, we gotta see the tests. So here's my old Samsung 720p TV. So you still haven't explained why my new TV is so much slower than my old CRT. If it's not HDMI and it's not scaling, then what is it? Another good question. Lag, delay, latency, whatever you want to call it, happens when a microprocessor, the brains of a device, has to perform so many calculations that the microseconds start to add up to milliseconds. It has nothing to do with HDMI and it has nothing to do with simply scaling from one resolution to another. So what you're telling me is that my new 4K TV sucks? Never forget that the top priority for a TV is image quality, not gaming. A TV with a good game mode will add just over half a frame of delay. And gaming monitors, which eliminate the unnecessary processing that a TV has, are now as low as only two to three milliseconds. That's a fifth of a frame, imperceptible from a CRT. So if the delay on your TV makes games run like a slug, then unfortunately, yes, your new 4K TV sucks, at least for gaming. Well, that doesn't make me feel any better. Oh, wait, I know. What if I use the component inputs on my new TV? That'll make it faster. You haven't been paying attention, have you? Huh? Well, shit. Shit is right, because component inputs on modern TVs are an afterthought. Most manufacturers use the cheapest, most budget components they can, if the TV even has one at all. You want to use the primary digital input on a modern display, in most cases, the HDMI input, because that's where manufacturers put all the money. Yeah, I'm playing Lords of Thunder right now through the OSSC and it's kicking my ass. I thought you said the lag was imperceptible. Oh, it is. It's just that you suck. Plus, your TV is still no good for gaming, remember? All right, asshole. How do I find out what TV to get next time that's good for gaming? Finally, the right question. You don't have to spend a fortune to get a good performing TV. If you check my description, I've put a number of good 55 to 65 inch televisions, well under several hundred bucks that you can get that will give you a great gaming experience. I've also placed a couple of links to online databases that have display after display and you can look up lag numbers for a specific display that you may be looking for. Thank you, I'll use that next time. But you're still a prick. If you get anything from this video at all, it's that we're living through a golden age of gaming tech. So this notion of HDMI being slow or digital being slow or that retro games can only be played on a CRT is completely outdated. Not that there's anything wrong with CRTs, they're gorgeous. That's why I have one too. 
and you can get them for free. But let's focus on the games and enjoying them and not all this bench racing that happens online. There's way too much bad advice and myths that are constantly being perpetuated. And really, these people are just tooting their own horn to sound smart, even though they've been debunked time and again, including in this video, because you can have an amazing experience with a modern system given a moderately priced display and the right gear. An HDTV is never going to look like a CRT, nor should it. But from a performance perspective, you can have an indistinguishable experience, even with budget priced gear using a modern system. And HDMI is the most common way you're going to do it. If there's one area where I would very much appreciate there not being any lag, that would be the end of this video and you clicking subscribe and hitting the bell because I've got lots of really cool video ideas that I want to share with everyone. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see me talk about other products or debunk some other myths that you keep hearing, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy these kinds of videos, definitely don't miss the PC Engine Mini lag test that I did a few weeks ago that brought down a shitstorm. But man, people loved it because there's a big difference between presenting factual lag numbers or blaming lag numbers on the inability to play a game.